Hi there, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for joining us for Jamaica Magazine. The beet armyworm infestation has affected about 43% of agricultural lands in Manchester and St. Elizabeth. Since the outbreak in March, losses are estimated at $111 million, with severe fallout in cash crop production, especially the availability of the favored seasoning scallion. Today we find out how the Agriculture Ministry is developing measures to control the pest. After this short break, the news, and then we'll delve into that issue and others. Stay with us. This is Romain Virgo. I'm your appeal to all of the youth them to just stay away from crime and violence. We know the temptation, the money, the fast life. People say them rate you. But that will only take you nowhere. If you stay in school and focus, then you can achieve anything. Be your own leader. A gang is a dead end. A message from the Ministry of National Security. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, June 2. Government will be spending $17.7 million to assist farmers affected by the beet armyworm in New Forest, Duff House, Agro Park and surrounding areas of Manchester. With this, we are going to provide the input for material, spray equipment. We're going to be looking at soil preparation. Those of you who have not done mulching, we are, and the land is there. We are going to assist with land preparation. That means we're going to plow up the land so that you throw up the worms way up and the birds will come and catch them. We are going to provide extension support. We're going to help in training and public education campaign. Minister J.C. Hutchinson was speaking at the handing over ceremony where he presented the farmers with mist blowers, weed hackers, chemicals, seeds and other items. Farmers are being urged to not only take care of the new equipment but to also do best practices in their cultivation. In the meantime, the ministry is partnering with the Heart Trust NTA to begin training agricultural aides on July 1 to work alongside RADA extension officers in the field to better assist farmers. The elimination of squatter settlements may be close to reality as debate on the building bill begins next week in Parliament. Local Government and Community Development Minister Desmond McKenzie says approximately 20% of the country's population reside in squatter settlements. These, he says, are the main areas usually affected by flooding and landslides in a natural disaster. The law, when passed, will work hand in hand with the disaster risk management act of 2015 to deal with structural and land use issues to ensure that national exposure to disaster is significantly reduced minister mackenzie was addressing yesterday's launch of disaster preparedness month and the start of the 2017 atlantic hurricane season the authorities are projecting an above normal season with 11 to 17 named storms, 5 to 9 hurricanes and 2 to 4 major hurricanes. Director General of the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, Major Clive Davis, says ODPEM is ready for all adversities. We've had public education and training at several communities across the island, schools and other institutions, places of business and even places of worship. Simulation exercises have been conducted, specialized training for first responders. Disaster Preparedness Month is being observed under the theme, Disasters Do Happen, Prepare More and Repair Less. Jamaica Promotions Corporation, Jampro, is giving 18 local companies the opportunity to promote their products in Barbados, Trinidad and the Bahamas. This will be facilitated through Jampro's Caribbean Market Mission, an export promotion venture to Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, and the Bahamas. 
dubbed Export Max 2. It begins on June 18 in Barbados and ends on June 30 in the Bahamas. Jampro's deputy chairman, Metro Siaga, says it's an opportunity to showcase some of Jamaica's best brands in the region and increase exports to nearby markets. This represents the start of a movement to grow Jamaica's exports. The mission is therefore very timely and well a well-embraced component to continue to drive our country's export journey. At Jampro's Caribbean market mission, companies will meet with buyers, visit key retail outlets, and carry out market survey through discussions with private and public sector partners. The Mandeville Regional Hospital has been gifted with well-needed equipment that will improve service at its ear, nose, and throat ENT department. Valued at $823,000, the equipment was donated by the Manchester Wellness Foundation. It will allow the ENT department to better perform surgical operations on pediatric patients, such as removing foreign objects from the esophagus or gullet. This equipment that you're providing will save lives. This donation is the second phase of support from proceeds earned in the Manchester Wellness Foundation's Run Walk, staged in July 2016. The Tourism Ministry has launched a Destination Assurance Council to ensure that the quality, standards and integrity of the tourism product are maintained. He says the council will assist to minimize the major fears of the tourism sector, which are safety, security and seamlessness. All the elements in government that provide assurances for health, for fire, for security, insurance, all of those are factors which go into enabling this destination assurance. The council will identify the needs of the industry and monitor the progress of developmental ventures of key stakeholders in resort areas. At the recent launch, the tourism minister said Jamaica was determined to sustain an expanded share of the growing global tourism sector, which has surpassed the oil industry to become the number one trade in the world. And finally, Amidst concern over the deteriorating political and economic situation in Venezuela, the Jamaican government is urging that country's government and opposition to commit to renewed dialogue and negotiation. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith made the call this week in a statement at the 29th meeting of consultation of Ministers of Foreign Affairs at the Organization of American States in Washington, D.C. She said all parties should work towards a comprehensive political agreement with concrete actions and guarantees to ensure its implementation for the well-being of the Venezuelan people. Minister Johnson Smith further urged Venezuela to reconsider its decision to withdraw from the Organization of American States. She reiterated that Jamaica discourages the isolation of Venezuela and would continue to express friendship and solidarity with the people of that country. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. Nutritious food. Succulent dishes. Superior workmanship. And excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. An integrated pest management program has been implemented to eradicate the beet armyworm outbreak in South Manchester and surrounding communities. The Agriculture Ministry is leading the charge, working with farmers to prevent a further loss of crops. Take a look. In late March 2017, the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA's monitoring program, unearthed increased beet armyworm activity in the fields of Manchester. The voracious pest has now spread to farms in St. Elizabeth, and RADA and other agencies of the Ministry of Agriculture are responding. Based on our estimation, approximately 297 farmers have been affected directly. Among those are farmers who completely lost their crop and will, it will require replanting. And there are other farmers who feel still in production, but they are battling the pressure of the pest and trying to uh, protect their crop. 
The beet army worm has a short life cycle, but each female lays numerous eggs in its lifetime, giving many generations per year. We're talking about anywhere between 18 to 23 days from egg right through to the adult stage. The larvae of the beet army worm feed on the foliage and fruits of plants and can render the produce unmarketable. They bore a hole and they go inside. Once they're inside, the feeding continent, that is the stage that does the devastation. A major challenge for Jamaican farmers is that the pest develops quickly under local conditions. Hot temperatures, the availability of lush crops all year round, and the absence of consistent field management by too many farmers who miss the early susceptible stages of the pest when the eggs are exposed. So just imagine the entire, um, say 150 eggs is in that one sack and the farmer misses the early susceptible stages. What you're having is a multiplier effect inside. In response to the outbreak, Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Agriculture and Fisheries and RADA develop strategies, uh, including budgetary support uh, to deal with outbreak as an immediate response. Text messages were sent, I know. For, um, radar officers were underground. So we've been holding a series of um, farmer sensitization sessions and smaller farmer training um, in clusters, smaller clusters, so that we can get more hands-on and more field um, experience. In addition to that, RADA has also reassigned some of their offices to increase the human resource that is in the area. The Agriculture Ministry is also receiving help from the Food and Agriculture Organization to develop a forecasting system to identify the presence of the pest in the field. It includes in it the temperature ex that is being collected by the Met Office on the ground. This is very useful in being able to implement what we call precise uh, management. So if we can time before it happens, where, what stage is going to be in the field, which gives us, give us a little heads up as to what, how to, to, to prepare the farmers a little better. You must increase your scouting activities to at least two to three times for the week. Looking specifically for any signs of the beet armyworm. The most effective stage to apply chemical spraying is at the just hatch period when the worms are very young and on the outside of the leaves. You also have to maintain the fact that chemical rotation is important. You don't want to get the population used to a particular chemical. The other thing is to practice good field sanitation. Farmers need to keep their field clean, free of weeds, rubbish, any, anything that the insect can hide under so that when they go out to do their chemical application, um, it can be more effective. And we have a very simple um, and cheap method of setting up the trap by using a plastic gallon bottle, which we go out and guide the farmers how to do it. Leaving your mature product in the field is only going to create more food, leave more food for the pest, and hence more devastation. Due diligence must be done by the farmers to examine their produce for any evidence of the pest after you have harvested. And so as much of it can be removed as possible and remain where it is and then properly dispose of there rather than to move it into another area where it can be, it can contaminate another area. The trash has to be either buried or your bag allow it to bake in the sun for at least three days full sunlight so that the heat can build up and um, destroy those stages within that. Farmers are also encouraged to do hand picking of egg sacs and till the soil often. So when the soil is tilled, it will expose them to birds, natural predators that can eat them. We also encourage farmers to get in touch with your local RADA representative. There's a RADA office in every parish, but there are also local extension officers um, that have offices in the different areas. Hurricanes can 
strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. Nearly $800 billion. That's the estimated loss to the agriculture sector due to the recent torrential rains which affected the country. Next, efforts by the government to prevent a scarcity of food as a result of this disaster. The Agriculture Ministry reports an estimated $794 million in damages to the sector, resulting from the flood rains in May. Over 10,000 farmers have been affected. In response, government has promised assistance, starting with an initial $18 million allocation. It is going to be a challenge in some areas because those areas where the crop has actually gone totally, the farmers actually don't seem as if they will be able to get back into cultivation before the end of the year. So we are going to have to find some alternate way of giving them some assistance to keep them going. We must support the, and provide productivity incentives to our farmers who continue to face risks through weather-related events and droughts and floods as well as pests and diseases. We are actually looking at a lot of the government land that is now idle, we are looking to see if we can put farmers on those lands. We have quite a number of areas that we have here marked already and we are going to be putting farmers on there to get the cultivation going like uh, Irish potato, onion, sweet potato, scallion, all of these crops, the cash crops. We are looking to uh, get farmers on those lands so that we don't have to import anything at all. Douglas Castle and Bog Hole in St. Anne are said to be the worst affected areas, with farmland still submerged underwater more than two weeks after the torrential rains. The Douglas Castle farmers will be provided with chicken and six weeks supply of feed, as well as seeds, fertilizers and other chemicals. We want to get you back on your feet right away. I want to congratulate you because you all have been the backbone of going this country as far as agriculture is concerned. For this country to grow, agriculture has to grow. Farmers who would like to benefit from the assistance may register with the Rural Agricultural Development Authority. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level, and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. Ever heard the saying, you're as healthy as you eat? It's true. Your health is largely dependent on the foods you put inside your body. Watch this. We must exercise, we must seek to eat the, the right portions of the food groups that the studies have shown are important to a healthy body. And healthcare in Jamaica, I think, needs to shift somewhat away from the challenges of curing ailments to the challenge of preventing. And as Jamaica moves to balance its disease prevention interventions with the curative aspects of healthcare, Jamaicans must explore the role that the foods we eat can play. Nutrition does play a role, both as a risk factor and as a tool for managing diseases such as cancer. Essentially, um, 
cancer uh, occurs whenever one of the cells in the body decides that it's going to misbehave and not listen to any instructions at all. And so it just grows and grows and grows and doesn't listen to the regular body signals to say um, this is how you should behave. So it's really a misbehaving um, cell which proliferates and grows and it then becomes a misbehaving tissue. And what you eat or not can make a difference in how your body cells behave. The fundamental control systems in your body are all chemicals. Um, and therefore, the chemicals that you put in your body come from food. So if there is an, any mismatch or, um, which can occur, um, one can end up with having uh, what we call a risk of cancer. Doctors say that a typical diet for most Jamaicans, with its huge servings of starchy foods like rice, flour, yam and banana, with only small amounts of vegetables, does not provide the healthy benefits that can come through a diet. Instead, doctors suggest eating more fruits and vegetables rich in fiber and antioxidants and fresh fruits high in calcium and vitamin D. Fat-related chemicals are among those that tend to promote cancer, so diets that are high in fat create more of a predisposition to the disease. Alcohol can also have a negative impact. We say you should not smoke. We also say that you should not consume alcohol, if at all possible. The equivalent of an ounce a day is perhaps the limit that we'd allow. Of course, there are other things not in our foods, found in our environment, which can cause you to get cancers, including toxins such as asbestos. But our focus here is on the role of what we consume, particularly processed foods, which doctors agree should only be eaten in minimal amounts. Some processed meats, for instance, have been linked to things like the propensity to develop colon cancer. To lower the risks, nutritionists recommend fresh meats that are broiled, baked, or steamed to get rid of the excess fat. Nutrition is seen not only as a means of prevention, but also part of the treatment for diseases such as cancer. Patients with cancer are often given specific nutrition interventions as part of their treatment regimen. So apart from the specific surgical procedure you may have or the radiological procedure that you may have, radiotherapy, or even the, the uh, chemotherapy that you may have, nutrition also plays a role in you surviving your therapy. In striving for a healthy lifestyle, which includes eating well, it's important to maintain physical and mental fitness. Fit individuals engaging in physical exercise at least three times per week are more likely not to have any of the chronic non-communicable diseases such as cancer. You should engage in at least three bouts of physical um, activity, at least 30 minutes for the day, moderate walking at minimum or the equivalent. You should have to be as stress-free as possible um, and um, you should aim to achieve your ideal body weight. Uh, so those factors would generally lead you to what we consider to be a healthy lifestyle which will tend to protect you not only from cancers but also other cardiovascular diseases like diabetes and hypertension. Disease prevention should be our priority. So let's all make our food our medicine and our medicine our food. It's everybody's business. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, Chikungunya, and Dengue viruses. Search for its breeding sites and destroy them. A message from the Ministry of Health. If you've ever attended one of Jamaica's renowned agricultural shows such as Denby or Montpelier, then you're likely aware of the versatility of our food. There's breadfruit flour, aloe vera wine, pumpkin ketchup, and the list continues. Just this past week, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said he would be taking a closer look at the synergies between agriculture and commerce. This, he says, is integral to getting the country's growth engine running much faster. We need to get our growth engine running much faster. So I'm going to be taking some personal time from the policy level, looking at the administrative issues that need to be resolved, looking at the regulatory issues that need to be resolved to ensure that there is greater synergy. From farm to table can be much more than producing things such as condiments. 
the opportunity for developing viable agriculture byproducts is vast and a prime avenue for increasing jobs and increasing the health standard of the country. The window of opportunity is even open to your home kitchen. Experiment with the foods you buy at the market. Try to make your own jam, sauce, or even fruit juice. Remember, a boost in commerce and agriculture will assist in making Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. It's a new beginning. New day is dawning. It's time to arise. We are the gene of achievement and pride. Bold new beginning, time for action. We have the spirit to fight on. This is Jamaica, this is our land. We have our future with God in our plan. We'll play our part building this great nation. This is Jamaica, this is our land. Let us make every effort to forge unity yeah, yeah, yeah. and resolve to work hard for our prosperity. Leaving our children a legacy of hope, breaking the shackles and smashing the old This is Jamaica. This is Jamaica. This is our land. This is our we have our future with God in our plan. We'll play our part. Oh, yeah. Together we can. This is where the magazine closes for today, but there's lots more to see on our webpage, jis.gov.jm. There you may find relevant information on government projects and policies. For more television features, visit our YouTube channel. We're also on other social media sites or you may download our app from the Google Play Store to stay informed while you're on the go. Have a wonderful evening. I'm Adrian Atkinson. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.